I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 30th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be talking about my experiences with my family living in Granada eight years ago. We're going to hit that right after the bump. <laughs> So this comes up because in the viewer comments just the other day, uh, someone mentioned that they'd spent some time in San Juan del Sur and some time in Granada, and they weren't sure that Nicaragua was for them based on their experiences. But they were hoping to come back and get a bit more of a broad experience, partially because they'd seen this channel and saw some things that they like or are interested in and want to explore a bit more broadly. And that's fantastic. And I'm glad that this channel is helping getting the word out there that there's a lot in Nicaragua to come explore. It's awesome, all the people who are like, I love getting up in the morning, watching the show and learning about Nicaragua or travel or just whatever, awesome. Uh, but I wanna talk about, so eight years ago, basically this is my adventure in becoming a Nicaraguan. And I think it has some really important highlights for people, especially the person who commented, um, as to how to approach looking at Nicaragua when you come, uh, if you do, if you're coming to Nicaragua and you're really serious about maybe this is a place you want to make your long-term home uh, or even a short-term home, how you need to think about the places that you're visiting. So eight years ago, when we first came to Nicaragua, we had been living in Panama. So we had some uh, experience with the region, but we had never been to Nicaragua before. We rented a house sight unseen in downtown Granada in the tourist district, beautiful house, the Casa Los Arcos, on the northwest side of the tourist area. It was not a bad area, it was pretty close to La Merced. And uh, we were able to walk to everything, did not need a car. Uh, we had a beautiful pool in the middle of the house. It really was a good experience. The children loved it. We liked our giant bedrooms. We liked the location in the city for the most part. And we got a good amount of Nicaraguan experience out of it. The entire thing was pretty good. However, there's some important details that came out of our time living there. And the most important one is that both my wife and I decided that, Ni that uh, Nicaragua was a country that we loved very much, obviously. But Granada was a city that we didn't really like living in. Not that we didn't like the city. It's a beautiful city with a lot to offer, but it tends to offer a lot to tourists and expats as opposed to having more normal city offerings. And so it, it really seems nice on the short term, but the longer you're there, the more that you find there's some problems with it. Specifically, a few things that I think people need to realize about Granada specifically. One is that it is the main tourist city. So the number of tourists moving through the city is extremely high. That alone is not a problem, but it is not a large city and the entire downtown zone is primarily for the tourists and everything is based around tourism. That means that there are a fairly good number of restaurants with a good variety of food. It is really easy to go to Granada and eat. Some of the best restaurants in the country are concentrated there. It has beautiful pedestrian ways. And just in the last few months, they've put in a beautiful new malecon, uh, all kinds of parks and lights, and they're really upping their game. And they started putting in these beautiful new mosaic tile works in the middle of the, 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 the pedestrian way. It's great like they've really done some nice stuff and they try to make the city attractive to tourists and it's full of hostels and high-end hotels you can stay in quite a bit of luxury you can stay very cheaply uh you can you have a beautiful waterfront there it's a lot of things and having tourists means you get a lot of things you won't get in other cities you get higher end restaurants uh, in granada than in leon you get higher end hotels in granada than leon you get more variety of places uh, all of that is wonderful what you also get is a feeling of being transient. Most of the people you meet are passing through. Restaurants are targeting people who stop once and move on, not people who come back time and time again. They have to. You also get a huge, and this is true the world over, this has nothing to do specifically with Granada or Nicaragua. Anytime you have a giant tourist population, you get a, a huge industry targeting tourists. Everything from souvenir shops and tacky stores to facades on traditional businesses uh, to beggars in the street, people who harass you in restaurants. Uh, it gets really bad and you don't realize even when I explain it, how big of a deal this is until you move there. Now, we were in Granada just a few days ago, and with people who live here in Leon, 
and are used to Nicaragua without beggars. On the beach, you basically have none. Not exactly, but basically. When you're in Leon, there are a few, but mostly they are small children who are con artists and not actual beggars. There are actual beggars, and quite often when you do find one, it's actually someone who's like an amputee or is truly so aged that they're non-ambulatory. Legitimate beggars. In Granada, you get a lot of healthy people who are simply going about their day, and the moment that they see a tourist, they turn into beggars and can be quite uh, insistent, to the point where when we lived there, they would come to our front door and see that we were working on the phone or on a computer or whatever, and would scream and just keep screaming, so you had to do something to pay them to go away, or you had to move to another place to work. It was really a problem, and they did it regularly. People would come by to sell us stuff all the time, which is not the same as begging, but they knew we could buy more things, and so they were very belligerent about the amount that they tried to sell us. People would literally shove a parrot through our window and try to make it stay in our house so they could extort money from us. Like, that was a constant thing. And it, of course, if you didn't live in the tourist district downtown, that would have been much less, even though it was Granada. But wanting to use the restaurants, wanting to be downtown, every moment that you're there, you notice the beggars. And our friends from Leon, before we, we got dropped off by a taxi on one side, on the west side of the, the Central Park, by the time we had reached the other side of Central Park, they had already commented, oh, you're right. I've already seen more people have, have come and begged from me while crossing the park than I've ever experienced in Leon. It is so completely different. And as you go down uh, the, 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 the walkway and go to the restaurants, and when you're sitting in the restaurants, it's just a constant stream of people coming into the restaurant to beg from you. Now, we do get that in Leon. We do get that in Chinandega. It does happen. But the amount of it is fractional. Maybe uh, one out of four times or one out of eight times that you go to eat, someone will come by while you're eating and, and actually beg from you. But in Granada, you can assume that if you're lingering over a meal, that you will start to see the same people make their cycle over and over again. And they won't even realize that they've begged from you, you know, an hour, 30 minutes before. They make the rounds, you're just another person to them, and they start all over again. So even if you pay them to go away, they won't because they won't remember you and they'll be right back. And the number of people who are just selling souvenirs on the street, much, much higher. While eating dinner, again, you'll likely have three or four people selling the same artisan's wares that they sell in every shop everywhere uh, to you. They'll come up to your table, and some of them are very nice, and they're just, hey, I'm selling stuff. Is there anything you're interested in? And some are quite insistent and will try to interrupt your meal as a tactic to get you to spend money with them. And this is fine when you're there for a weekend as a tourist. When you live there, this becomes a major problem, knowing that going out to eat means you're going to have beggars the entire time as you, as you walk to it, as you return home. If you're carrying leftovers, children will run up and say, can I eat your leftovers? which is actually a health crisis, uh, or was in the past in Granada, because there were so many people giving away so much unhealthy food, because for them, it's a special dinner. Oh, I went out for a nice dinner in Granada. I've got leftover French fries or mac and cheese or something that's really greasy and heavy and fatty. And these kids, because they get healthy food from the government or healthy food at home, uh, they then want to go out and beg because they're getting really delicious junk food, basically, in massive quantities, and no one's overseeing it. And so it actually started causing childhood obesity and diabetes and other problems here in Granada, but not in the rest of the country, because so many tourists were there willing to cast off their leftover food, which feels, when you do it, like you're doing the best thing ever. My gosh, this person doesn't want money. They actually want to eat my food, which is true. But they want it because it's unhealthy, not because they're hungry. Things like that wear on you when it becomes your everyday life that you know there's going to be people screaming in your door, not once in a while, every day, often all throughout the day. When you know that as you step out of your house, people will follow you. Not because they're going to shiv you in the street, but because they're going to try to see where you go, figure out when you have money, figure out when's a good time to ask you. It's just never going to end. And when you get to your destination, there are people waiting to beg from you. It is a major problem. It's a lot like Morocco before they did their cleanup. Not as bad. But Morocco was, was quite bad, but they also did a lot of cleanup. They made it highly illegal to target the tourist with heavy penalties, and it turned a lot of the um, tourism infrastructure in Morocco around. 
Going to Morocco is an incredibly pleasant experience because the chances are you will never have someone begging from you that isn't like a legitimate beggar in the street. If you see them then, of course, give them some money like, oh, you can't stand? Yes, you need help, of course. But if it's just people who've decided they make more money through less effort by begging, that's not something you want to encourage. That hurts everybody, including the national economy. So living in Granada gave us a very different experience. And I don't say this to disparage uh, Granada. It's a great city. And a lot of expats choose it after having experienced it. They go there, they spend time, and they say, this is what I want. In fact, more than any other city in the country, they choose Granada. So it has a lot to offer for people who've been here a long time, right? Some of the most prominent expats in the country are in Granada. And for good reason, great houses, good prices, lots of restaurants, easy access to a lot of different things. It has a lot going for it. But if you're like us, we prioritize the impact that we had from those other things. Plus we found that the city didn't get the kind of wind that we like, it didn't, the weather just didn't fit for us. It was a lot of little things. It was enough that we fell in love with the country of Nicaragua, but also decided we didn't want to return to Granada. <clears throat> this is important because Years later, when we decided, or I started suggesting that we make the move to Nicaragua, my wife had a hard time separating Nicaragua from her memories of Granada, and it, was a, it took about a year, probably not that much, uh, to convince her that we could move and that life would be very different. Once we proposed living on the beach, that it could be near Leon or near uh, Managua, then she said, oh, Oh, I did like those places. I do like the beach. It's, oh, M Nicaragua was fantastic. I just didn't like some things about Granada. And it wasn't that Granada was that bad. It's that it tipped it so that it became a city she wasn't willing to consider moving back to. And I didn't want to move back to it either, either. But for me, it was easy to visualize that there are parts of Nicaragua I really loved, Leon, Matagalpa, Hinotega, that I could easily move to and she couldn't separate it as easily from her memories of Granada. To her, that was Nicaragua, and it became a, no, I don't want to live there. I want to live somewhere else, maybe somewhere in the region. Let's go explore, but I'm not willing to commit to Nicaragua. And then eventually, through a couple travels and a couple trips and a couple ideas and working with her for a while, eventually she was like, okay, yes, Nicaragua is what I love, and Granada is simply not the right choice for us. Uh, but this is important because a lot of you are tempted or have done so that you will come here and, and test the waters and you will do so in Granada or San Juan del Sur. And these are important to understand as being very different than the rest of Nicaragua. They're not bad places. I originally moved to Granada and I fell in love with this country because I lived in Granada. I then went to San Juan del Sur in 2019 and spent a bit of time there. And that's what convinced me we needed to move back. So it, both of them hold a special place in my heart, even though I don't want to live in either one of them. Now, there are both places I would happily live if I didn't have access to the rest of Nicaragua. But I do, and that's what I enjoy even more. So that's important to keep as perspective. Had uh, we only had the experience, only the option of Granada, if we had only been to Granada and only experienced that, my wife would not have considered moving back to Nicaragua, a place she absolutely loves living, uh, where she absolutely loves living. And when I took Paul to San Juan del Sur in 2021, he got an entire four hours in the city before he said, we're giving up our hotel rooms, we're not even gonna consider the city, there's no way I would live here, this is awful because of the culture of the expats there, just because there's so much of an expat ecosystem and this drama of the expat world, like a lot of people love that, right? The enclave living life, like it is, it's how you picture a lot of Miami, for example, but that's specifically what we're looking to avoid if we wanted that, we could easily live in Miami, right? But wanting to be in Nicaragua, that didn't have the things that we wanted, and again, San Juan del Sur is awesome. It has unique stuff that the rest of the country does not. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to consider it. So don't rule it out. Don't rule out Granada. Don't look at, well, Scott says, no, 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 I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying they don't fit for us, right? For Paul, San Juan del Sur completely doesn't fit. I think my wife could have handled it. She'd have been like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's different than Granada in ways that she would enjoy. And I think Paul could probably handle Granada because my wife would be, the things that she doesn't like, he'd be like, ah, I could put up with that, right? But with us as a group, when we looked at different places, those two, which are the most obvious to check first, each of them had an automatic veto by someone who was looking at it. And neither of them was at the top of my list, but both for me, I could handle. If I had to, like I said, I would happily live in Nicaragua in those places and be fine. But I had lots of places I preferred being. My preferred place is Matacalpa, as everyone knows, right? Absolutely fantastic. 
Um, and so it was the combination that brought us to Leon. But if we didn't have a bigger survey, if we hadn't spent time going around the rest of the country and really knew that these other living styles existed, we would have potentially ruled out the country based on our experiences in the main tourist hubs. How a country is like where there's tourists is very different than how it is where there is not. Spain is a great example. I love visiting Barcelona. Honestly, I wouldn't like to live there. It's too many tourists. It's too touristy. It's got prices that just are adjusted for tourists and there's just, it isn't what I like, but I love the city. It's possibly my favorite city to visit. But if I had to live in a large city, I prefer Rome or Madrid or Guatemala City. All right, very different things. Places Now, those places do have a lot of tourists, but they also have so many people living there that the tourists aren't as much. And I know Rome seems crazy. There's so many tourists in Rome, but it doesn't have the same feel as Barcelona. Rome is much bigger, and you can get away from the tourists in ways that are that are different. I don't know. It's different, trust me. Um, but, but Guatemala City, like really no tourists, and it's such a beautiful city. I love it. So that kind of aspect can be a big factor for you. And the reason I'm saying all this is because the person who commented lived in those places, checked out those places, and has one view of Nicaragua. And if I had that same view, and that was my, my limited scope of having explored here, I would have very different impressions, very different things to say about the country. But instead, I'm able to show San Juan del Sur and Granada as here are some, some things that are set apart. You might like them because you have different uh, uh, factors that matter to you than for me. So definitely don't rule them out without paying attention to them. Definitely go check them out. Consider them. But also consider that they're not indicative of the, the majority of the country. The prices in the rest of the country, much lower. The uh, expat population, much smaller. The attention to tourists, much lower. Uh, your ability to move about and be more of a member of actual Nicaraguan society rather than falling into a member of an enclave or an expat community, much higher. But that's not for everyone. Some people want enclave living. Well, living in Leon would be terrible for you, right? Matagalpa would be absolutely atrocious. You need to look at what factors matter for you, and maybe you don't know what those factors are, and that's okay. I did a lot of traveling and a lot of looking at different places without really knowing what my factors were. I had a few things that I was aware of, and you probably have a few too, but you probably have a lot you haven't really internalized yet, maybe because you haven't gone out and explored, and it requires doing that before you realize, wow, people begging at restaurants actually wears me down day to day. But you may live in Granada, and say, well, I really love Granada. I love the architecture and I love the sidewalks and I just like where it sits in the country and the lake, but I want to build my own home, have a custom place and, and cook at home or hire a private chef. And suddenly I don't care what those restaurants are. You can beg all you want. I'm not there, right? I'm at home and I send someone out to go grocery shopping. Depending on your lifestyle, your factors in the same place could be wildly different. Even if the begging really bothered you, maybe it doesn't happen to you because of your lifestyle. So a lot of those factors, you, you just need to, I think in many cases, uh, in any country, if I was saying this about Guatemala, we'd say the same thing. Oh, you liked Guatemala City, don't just assume you'll like Antigua. They're completely different. Antigua is all tourists, all tourists. It's hard to find anybody who lives there. And those who do, you're like, what, what's it like living in a sea of tourists? Like you can't walk down the, the street, everything's in English. Like it's just, it's crazy. But if you're going to uh, Guatemala City, it is the exact opposite. You never see a tourist and there's loads of people living day-to-day -day lives right there. Their community is vibrant. So just in that one little tiny area that you can get between in about an hour, completely different worlds. And the same thing between Granada and say Managua. They're very, very different worlds and they're just down the road, I almost fell over, right down the street from each other. Uh, so, when you're looking, just remember, get a broader survey and make sure that you're not looking at just the tourist hotspots, the expat hotspots, and th those could be two different things, right? In any country, any place that you're looking, make sure that tourism and expats and normal life are three different things. Now, they may overlap in a lot of cases, but make sure that you're getting enough of a survey that you know which of those makes sense for you and if you have tested that in the country you are going to with Granada and San Juan del Sur only. Those are both touristy and expat str strongholds. Where So those overlap in that case. It's really easy to go to a third location and get something that is neither and really get a better feel for the country. So that is my talk on Granada. That is why uh, maybe you should consider it and maybe why you should consider looking further afield depending on which factors make sense for you, which things get you excited about a new place to live in. 
get down in the comments. I want to know your experiences with Granada, San Juan del Sur, which places you suggest that people try out. Where have you been? What have you, what have you liked? Have you checked just one place and ruled out a country because it seems a certain way because that one place? Imagine the United States only going to New York, but then experiencing California or Iowa or Texas. There's so much variety as you move around a country. Of course, the U.S. is much bigger, but the same things hold true in a Nicaragua. One city to another can be an extremely different living experience, uh, and we often, as foreigners, lump especially small countries together as if it's a single entity and uniform throughout the country when it is not. Maybe more uniform than the U.S. is, but it is not in any way uniform. It is certainly culturally different uh, in, in different parts of Nicaragua, uh, sometimes quite dramatically. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. If you're interested in relocation assistance, even just a conversation, hit us up at info at relocatenicaragua.com. Share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Go watch another episode at the end of this one. Hit like on that one, too. The more you watch, the more it helps the show. And if you haven't checked out the shorts, check those out, too. If you haven't checked out our sister channels like Drive Warp and Nicaragua 360, it would be great if you check those out, too. We're just about to tip the 100 subscriber mark on both of those, which helps us get more word out about those channels. So please go subscribe. Show a little love over there. And I will see all of you tomorrow.